Hello, Jeff Zwerink here again with Give and Take, where we look at the latest scientific issues to help you be more confident in sharing the gospel. Today, I'm joined again by good friends Mark Perez and Ken Samples, and we're going to look at an important question. Has science been hijacked by those who don't believe in God? Ken, Mark, good to have you here again. Thank you. Hi, Jeff. So kind of what I want to address and the, the nature of this question is that uh, as a Christian who interacted in the church, very often there's this undertone in the church that unless you have a biblical worldview only, that really you just don't have to worry about anything or you can't trust anything that comes out of the scientific enterprise. So just kind of want to flesh that out, kind of look at from a philosophical perspective. Is that a good way to look at things or not? So has science been hijacked by those who don't believe in God? No, I would say no, and, and part of the reason is that we have plenty of good Christians who are doing good science. So we have Christians in the church who are actually practicing scientists, and from a Christian worldview, they're very successful. And, and we don't have to look at just what's going on today. I mean, if we look at the history of science and the history of Christianity, we can see that that's, that's happened before. Um, what do you think, Ken? What, what about the history of science and the history of, of theology? I think that uh, where science has changed or moved is that today's scientists may not be nearly as well aware of the philosophical and worldview issues that are connected to science. Let, let, let me state just mm -hmm. a couple things. You know, to do science, you have to believe that there's a real world out there, that it's uniform, that you're, you can trust your, your mind and cognitive faculty, sensory organs, that math and logic are reliable. So there are a lot of philosophical assumptions that go into making science possible. Well, isn't that just, I mean, you're, you're talking about some of those. A lot of those just seem kind of self-evident, if you will. Not, not in Hinduism uh, and not necessarily in atheistic naturalism. Those assumptions and presuppositions have certain a philosophical leaning toward theism. And the other issue is the historical side. I mean, uh, science was birthed one time, and it was in the 1600s, and it was in Christian Europe. So the Christian worldview birthed science and, and allowed it to flourish. And most of the, the great leading scientists for a couple hundred years were Christian. Uh, Pascal, Newton, Galileo, Copernicus, Th those, those are no slouches. Those are, those are big, big names, names out yeah. of the science. So, so, so your contention is that the, the philosophical foundation, if you will, of the scientific enterprise ultimately flows out of the Judeo-Christian worldview, not Hinduism, Buddhism, atheism, or what have you. Those other civilizations may have made contributions, but science began once, and the, the other worldviews weren't able to kind of nourish science so that, so that it could thrive. So, so doesn't that kind of lend credence? I mean, I, you, let's say, okay, Judeo, the Judeo-Christian worldview birthed science. Um, doesn't that kind of lend credence to the idea that it's just been hijacked today? Because a lot of what you hear is that, oh, all the science points towards atheism. And so how do we deal with that, that it seems like it has been hijacked? I, I think in one sense, Jeff, science has been so successful that it's kind of moved toward the what uh, or the how away from the why. So it's historical and philosophical origins it's, it's moved away from. But I don't think that that means that there aren't good scientists who have a, a religious worldview. In one way, I think it, it is the success, the practical success mm. of doing science. You know, I, I find that interesting. Uh, you know, one of the talks I give a lot is talking about Big Bang cosmology. And, you know, that's kind of happened in the more modern era, if you will. And when you look at what happened in Big Bang cosmology, one, you know, there, there isn't really this look at the philosophical presuppositions, kind of as you're claiming, but you go from a universe that is eternal and static with the laws of physics changing and, and the universe decaying, and now you've got a Big Bang cosmology says the laws of physics are constant, the universe is expanding, and it has a beginning. That, to me, doesn't seem like science has been hijacked. It seems like science has mm -hmm. honed in on the truth, kind of regardless of what your worldview is at this point in time. What would you guys, how would you guys respond to that claim? Well, I would respond by saying that if science is doing a really clean inspection of the world, and we use science as an instrument to examine the universe, to examine the creation, it's going to lead us 
not away from Christianity, but towards it. Because the truth of the Bible is found in nature, and the truth of nature is found in the Bible. They're not both saying the same mm -hmm. thing, but they both are complementary. I, I think that is a profound truth that often gets missed in this discussion, is that one of the aspects of Christianity and, and the scientific process, as you will, is it's ultimately about discovering the truth. And, and if, as you say, and I believe that God has revealed truth in creation and in scripture, they're gonna say the same thing when we, when we get down and dig into it. And I think you make a very important point, Jeff, that uh, as we moved into the 20th century, scientific community thought they were gonna find a universe that was either eternal or self-sufficient. What they discovered is a universe that had a beginning. That speaks of theism, it speaks of the Bible. So as Christians, what can we do or what do we do? What, what would be your encouragement to Christians who think that science has been hijacked by those who don't believe? What kind of practical things can we do? One of the things I would suggest is if, <clears throat> if you're a Christian and you're in one of two positions, you're gonna be, maybe you wanna be a, a scientist, mm -hmm. um, to, to dive right in and see how you can show that, what, first of all, how the world is made in whatever discipline you're in and recognize God's hand in that. The other one is if you're not a scientist or you don't plan on being a scientist, distinguish between what you hear as scientific inferences and scientific facts. Mm -hmm. So the scientific facts are the observations that are made. The inferences are the conclusions we take from those. Sometimes those can be colored philosophically or ideologically. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's the mistake people make. It's not the science itself, it's the interpretations they get from the scientific facts. Be wary of those and interrogate them. So, okay, mm -hmm. if you're going to say this particular theory is true, let's see what the basis is. That seems to me also to emphasize your first point is that as Christians, we need to be very much involved in this endeavor yes. because the people who talk about it and popularize and kind of really ask the questions that get investigated are the people who are involved in the discipline, if you will. So. You know, I, this is one area where I really do see the church has a tremendous opportunity because the Christian faith isn't just something that we believe because we've been taught. We believe it because it's true. And science has this passion of figuring out what's true about the world. And when we look at historically what Christianity has had to say, the influence it's had in the scientific process and endeavor, the prominent Christians throughout history of who's been involved in science, we really do see a compelling picture that the God who created the universe is the God who inspired scripture and he's revealed truth that we can understand by studying his creation, that we can then use that truth to go out and share the gospel with others. And that is a great opportunity that we have.